Hello, Chloe. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How are you? Good. Now, I'm interested in your first audience project this year. I'm a study, and I understand. How old are you? I'm 15. 15 in what grade? 10. Grade 10. And is this your first time exhibiting at a science fair? No, it's my third. But not third time. So you like science? Of course. <laughs> Who doesn't? So could you tell me a little bit about your project? Sure. Um, my main goal was to genetically modify the cell of Chlamydomonas reinhardii, which is an algae found all across the world. So if I would be able to improve its Rubisco enzyme, which is the enzyme responsible for CO2 fixation, if I could allow the uh, algae itself to capture more CO2, uh, we can understand that that would be greatly beneficial on a global scale. Um, so I created a system that kind of validated the first part of this project. Since it's a very ambitious project, I needed to divide it up in steps. And firstly, um, this project, in, uh, what I did in the first stages, was I tested two different types of, chlam of chlamydomonas lines. First, the wild type, which is um, the unmodified uh, version. Do you of find that anywhere? Yeah, you find that all over the world. Um, it was given to me, of course, by a scientist. Um, and I cultured it myself, and then I grew it. Um, and I put it in this system, and this system basically detects how much CO2 it can capture. So it all starts here. Um, this is a compressurized air cylinder, and it allows airflow through all two boxes. So it bubbles through the algae, and you need to be very careful with your algae. I tested two different types of algae, wild type and DIM-1. Now, DIM-1 is a modified uh, version of Chlamydomonas reinhardii, where they just knocked out the chloroplast. So it's not able to do photosynthesis. I wanted to test DIM-1 to test my system, because in theory, if it cannot do photosynthesis, then the same amount of CO2 going into the system should be the same amount exiting the system. And was it? And it did. It did. And so that means that my system can provide accurate data. Well, how the system works is that uh, airflow is provided through all two boxes. I place my algae in here. The CO2 bubbles through the algae. Now, before I touch on how it's going to get to the second box, I just want to point to the fact that I have a CO2 sensor here that it detects the ambient CO2 concentration, which is what's being pumped in through the system. So it goes into the second box, and in this box I have a CO2 sensor as well, and it calculates the final ppm value. So I have the sensor reading before photosynthesis and the sensor reading after photosynthesis. Um, so I was able to detect how much CO2 Chlamydomonas reinhardii can capture on its own. And uh, I got a wide range of it. Actually, it went from 43% here to about 56% here to about 43% here. So um, what, what con What's contributing to the differences? Those are big differences. There are, there are differences. As you can see, on the first and the, the last run, they don't change much. They both started at around the same PPM value, and they both ended off at around the same PPM. Value. What was the most special run, um, in my opinion, was the second run. You see, it started at a higher PPM value and it dropped even lower than both. And basically, the reason why this is is because Chlamydomonas is um, an algae that adapts to any environment. If you put it in an environment that has a high concentration of CO2, it will work very hard to capture more CO2. If you put it in an environment with low concentration of CO2, it won't work as hard. So here there was more CO2, it worked harder to so capture it CO2. So it attracts itself. Exactly, so that's why you see an even more dramatic decrease. So uh, as a conclusion, my system, uh, firstly, provides accurate data and it's able to detect any type of algae, um, how much uh, CO2 it can capture. And that was the, what I wanted out of my project. It was a very positive outcome. So CO2 is becoming increasingly dangerous, correct? Increasingly, yes. So if, if a project like yours could, be, could have significant uh, benefit, if we can well, do more of it? Yes, the thing is, this is just the first stage of my project. I haven't genetically modified anything yet. Um, which is what I would like to do. I would like to improve the Rubisco enzyme. If I find, um, I have my baseline value now for Chlamydomonas uh, unmodified, how much it captures. Uh, if I modify the Rubisco enzyme and I realize that it captures 70% of the CO2 concentration, then I have improved the Rubisco enzyme. And then that is how we will reduce CO2 emissions. Even though Chlamydomonas reinhardii uh, 
absorbs about 55% of the concentration. It's still not enough. Every year we get further and further away from the safety limit of atmospheric CO2, which is 350 parts per million. So even with all this algae growing all over the world and how much it's uh, capt uh, capturing, it's just not enough. So we do need to find um, a better improved uh, Rubisco enzyme. So there's lots of motivation to get to the bottom of this one. Congratulations, oh, Chloe. Thank you You've very much. You've done a very much. good job.